Good evening. Welcome to our Wednesday night midweek service. Welcome to those online. Let's stand and open in prayer. Thank you for coming out tonight. I worship the Lord. Lord, we thank you, dear God, for an opportunity to come into your house and to worship, Father, and be refreshed in your Holy Spirit, Father, in your presence. Lord, we thank you, dear God, for all that you've done for us, Father, all that you're going to do. Lord, we ask you to bless this meeting. Father, prepare our hearts for your word. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. This joy that I found. This joy that I found. The world didn't give it to me. No, no, no. This joy that I found. The world didn't give it to me. This joy that I found. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. Praise God. Oh, this joy that I found. The world didn't give it to me. Oh, this joy that I found. The world didn't give it to me. Oh, this joy that I found. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. This, this peace that I found, the world didn't give it to me. Oh, this peace that I found, the world didn't give it to me. This peace that I found, the world didn't give it to me. Oh, the world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. Praise God. Praise God. Nothing like the peace of Jesus. Hallelujah. I've got peace like a river. Peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like Peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. Peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. Peace like river i've got peace like a river in my soul i've got joy like a fountain i've got joy like a fountain joy like a fountain i've got joy like a fountain in my soul oh i've got joy like a fountain joy like a fountain i've got joy like a fountain in my soul. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down I pray 
comes, we'll sing it one more time. Oh, peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Sweet I've asked Beverly to sing that again, and instead of uh, singing along, just close your eyes and just open your arms and just allow the Lord to fill you with his peace. Amen. Peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down. From the Father above, sweep over my spirit forever, I pray, in fathomless billows of love. you are the prince of peace lord you told us lord the things that were going to be happening in this world lord so that we wouldn't be afraid lord that we wouldn't be alarmed and and taken by surprise but lord to to know that you're in control lord you're you're the beginning and the end lord you know everything that's happening in this world everything that's happening in our personal lives heavenly father your son says said that you know how many hairs we have on our head and that speaks of of how how you know us so well you know everything about us because you care about us because you love us and lord we don't need to be alarmed jesus thank you lord when you showed up to your disciples you'd say peace you'd say peace and lord that's your your message through the song service this evening peace and lord we receive that this evening thank you, thank you jesus thank you, Holy Spirit. thank you jesus lord we cast every care upon you lord because you care for us every anxiety because you care for us lord god there's so much uh, just a mess happening in this world lord so much confusion so many lies lord there's just it's horrible lord the wars that are happening the lives that are being lost Lord, that was never your plan. God, that was never your plan. Your plan from the beginning was one big family of love. Lord, loving and caring for one another, enjoying life together. But Lord, sin entered in and right off the bat, Lord, Cain killed Abel. Abel. But Lord, you're in control and we pray, God. We pray, Lord, for the nations of the world. God, we pray, Lord, that... that that God, that you would have mercy, that you'd bring peace. God, we pray, oh God, that your word, the gospel would spread rapidly and that people would honor your word as as, as it is the word of God. Lord Jesus, you are the answer. You're the one that brings peace. Lord, you're the one that kicks out the devil, Lord, and brings in the Holy Spirit. 
God, that's what our world needs. And so we pray, oh God, Lord, in your unfailing love, for you are not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance. Lord, let your word spread rapidly. God, let your people, Lord, be full of boldness and wisdom and the words to say. God, whether missionaries or, Lord, here right in Metropolis, Lord God, to, to do our part, Lord, to share your word. For, Lord, as, as the Apostle Paul wrote, he's not ashamed of the gospel because, God, that's your power to save people. And, Lord, then our world will be changed. Then families will be whole. Communities will be well. Lord, Chicago won't be a disaster anymore. Lord, the Middle East won't be a disaster, Lord, when people receive you. And so, God, we pray, God, your will, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And your will is that every person receive Christ. God, we pray for that. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, um, I just pray, God, this just came to mind. Lord, if there's any sin in us, God, if there's anything that would stand between us, Lord, and you. God, we pray, Lord, that you would forgive us, that you would remove that. Lord, if there's things we don't even know, God, we pray, Lord, by your Holy Spirit, God, enlighten us to that so that, God, we can, we can walk in the fullness of joy and peace and power in the Holy Spirit for your glory. God, thank you for that. Thank you. Lord, there's uh, many in the congregation with various sicknesses. Lord, tests coming up. And Lord, we pray peace. We pray, Lord, your blessing, your hand of grace and healing upon them. Jesus, thank you, Lord, that by your stripes we're healed. God, we give you praise for that, Jesus. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Lord. God, we lift up our, uh, our upcoming children's ministry. Lord, God, we pray that you'll help us, God, to complete this preparation cycle and, 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 the, uh, and also the, the uh, Sela Coffee House. Lord, God, that you'll help us to complete this, Lord, so that we can launch this ministry. And Lord, we know, God, that your direction for us, God, at Lighthouse, Lord, is in partnering with you to reach children, Lord, in Metropolis. And God, we thank you, God, for your help. We thank you for your grace. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We've come into your house tonight to be filled, to be refreshed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, let's continue to worship the Lord in our giving this evening. And um, praise the Lord. Would you like to pray over the offering? Sing this song with me. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glance of his dear face all sorrow will erase so bravely run the race till we see Christ it will So small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race. Thank 
thank you for your giving. Amen. The Bible says, you may be seated, the Bible says that uh, that the body of Christ is built up as each part does it, it does its work. Amen. And I think I paraphrase that a little bit, but you could read that in Ephesians chapter four, I believe. And uh, so praise the Lord. We all have a part, don't we? Uh, and we all come to church to be blessed and refreshed and encouraged, but we all have a part to, uh, uh, to uh, contribute and uh, praise God. Um, just like our physical body, Right, every every part has a has a part to play, and I know doctors they don't they don't know everything, and and I've heard some say, well, you know the the uh, the appendix that's just you know proof of evolution, and it's just the leftover part that really doesn't do anything. But then you know I heard about this lady, true story. She uh, uh, ate a lot of you know um, birds that that they hunted, you know bird shot, and uh, this lady. Uh, ended up her her uh, appendix was bad and you know what her appendix was full of bird shot and uh, so you know when you're uh, my understanding is you know the little pellets sometimes you end up swallowing them eating the the bird meat or whatever and and but you know what I'm like the Lord put that appendix there it was catching it was catching all those pellets <laughs> and uh Everything's there for a reason. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just people get, people think they're, they're, they're just smarter than God, you know, and that's not my message tonight. That was just a filler. <laughs> but what's that? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, tonight we're going to start a new study, and, and it's uh, going to be uh, in the book of Amos. I believe the Lord wanted me to go through the book of Amos, and, um, and so, uh, praise the Lord. If you hadn't uh, gotten a, a, a bulletin for uh, April, uh, there's one out there, and, uh, and really we had, we had one celebration, uh, Dennis and Juanita, their, uh, their anniversary was on Saturday, right? And, uh, and how many was that? 63, 63. that's awesome. And, and they still sit close and smile. That's <laughs> praise the Lord. And, uh, but uh, uh, so, and then uh, really a reminder, uh, next Sunday is Mission Sunday, right? The second Sunday of every month. And, and uh, so we want to continue to, to give towards our missionaries and, and to, to be in those far off places where we can't be ourselves. So, but uh, Amos, um, I'm going to read the first verse and then um, give some introduction uh, information about uh, Amos. And uh, <clears throat> the Bible says, The words of Amos, one of the shepherds of Tekoa, the vision he saw concerning Israel two years before the earthquake, when Uzziah was king of Judah and Jeroboam son of Joahash, was king of Israel. All right, so um, the words, uh, actually in the Hebrew, it, it, it means a collection of sayings, prophecies. You know, we can see that in uh, the book of Isaiah, the book of Jeremiah. In fact, Isaiah is not even placed in chronological order, okay? The Holy Spirit wanted it, you know, arranged differently, and, but it's a collection of words from the Lord. And uh, in Amos, there's, and it starts out, there's eight prophecies of judgment, three sermons of judgment, five visions of judgment. And you're like, that's it, I'm leaving now. <laughs> this isn't going to be encouraging. But the last part, five promises of restoration. Praise the Lord. And, uh, you know, God is so awesome. You know, in Whenever, you know, you could, I think, read the, the, the you know, the most, uh, I guess, difficult or 
you know, uh, judgments coming, but God always gives hope, doesn't he? He always, there's hope in the Lord. There's hope in the Lord. Praise God. Well, <clears throat> in this first verse, and I'm going to, okay, I already backed up. Uh, the Lord has given us historical time pegs, okay? The kingdom of Israel is split during this time, okay? So now there's a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom, and uh, the north is called Israel, the south is called Judah, and uh, Amos was being used by God as a prophet when Uzziah was king of Judah, and Jeroboam II was king of Israel, and most specifically, the Bible says that two years before the earthquake, okay, now uh, we can read in Zechariah 15, 5, um, uh, it says, you will flee by my mountain valley, for it will extend to Azale. You will flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of uh, Judah. <laughs> Almost said Egypt. <laughs> Wake up, Brett. Um, so this earthquake must have been obviously a huge event right? Bigger than the eclipse <laughs> that we just had. I mean, this was an event that was remembered for generations to come. And, you know, just think of it, the, we, we see earthquakes that take place in areas like Pakistan, you know, or, you know, and, and the buildings are not like our modern buildings. And it's horrible how many people die because the buildings, they just crumble. They just fall apart. You know, in modern in modern uh, cities, you know, United States, Japan, they'll say, oh, just get in the doorway, you know, and, and uh, you know, where it's safe. And, and uh, but in these old buildings, I mean, they were fleeing. They were fleeing for their lives to get out of the city before they were buried in the rubble. And so they were fleeing. And um, so this was a significant uh, occurrence and, um, uh, you know, in the Bible, uh, there's mentioned, uh, you know, uh, earthquakes are mentioned. Uh, when Jesus uh, gave his life for us on the cross, the Bible says this in, in Matthew, from noon until three in the afternoon. Okay, so how long did our eclipse last? Okay, where we were at was four minutes in Carbondale. Okay, we got longer. Okay, and so um, noon to three, three hours. Okay, this was not, you know, the moon going in front of the sun. This was God's like, okay, he's dimming the light on the sun or whatever. You know, so, so uh, from noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When uh, some of those standing there heard this, they said, he's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rock split. And the Bible says when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that happened, in other words, the darkness, how he died, everything, they were terrified and exclaimed, surely he was the son of God. Okay, so God was using the supernatural events to, uh, uh, you know, to really bring salvation to these soldiers, to, uh, uh, to make a point, you know, this is my son. He, um, and, and really, I haven't really meditated and prayed on all what that meant, but God was making a point through the earthquake and, and everything else that was happening. And um, we read again in, in, uh, at the resurrection, there was a violent earthquake. <laughs> For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven 
and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and, stone and sat on it. I always love that. You know, this, two, uh, this uh, stone was like two tons or something like that. He rolls, he rolls it back and sits on it like, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no problem. But there was a violent earthquake, the Bible says. A violent earthquake at Jesus' resurrection. And then Jesus talked about earthquakes as the, at the signs of the end. Then he said to them, this is uh, Luke chapter 21. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation. Okay, what does that mean? <laughs> War and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, famine and pestilences in various places and fearful events and great signs from heaven. Okay, so earthquakes, um, I, I, and I, the reason that I, I went on a little bit more because Amos Verse, chapter 1, verse 1, gives the time peg that this was two years before the earthquake, the big earthquake. And as we read through the book of Amos, we're going to realize, you know, I believe when that earthquake happened, people were, were remembering Amos's prophecies that we're going to read, and hopefully they were remembering them and thinking, God is not happy with us. And... Um, so modern, um, well, let me, let me, before I talk about that, how many, when you were a kid, you remember the first time you're, you're hearing thunder, lightning, weren't you scared as a kid? You know, most, most kids are afraid of that. Animals are afraid. A lot of times dogs like, the dogs are like, I want to get in bed with you, you know. Uh, Javi, he's okay, but sometimes if it's like really bad, he'll 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 come to our door and <laughs> I'll be like, it's okay, Javi, you know, we're fine. Blood's over the doorpost, <laughs> we're good. Um, but uh, really, thunder and lightning is a leftover from Noah and the flood. There was no thunder and lightning before the flood. Can you imagine? In, okay, now, so God tells Noah to build this ark. And the Bible had said that the ground was watered from, like, from the dew and the springs rising up and water in the land. Okay, so God says that he's going to open the star windows of heaven and, you know, water's going to come out of the sky. Never happened before, okay? So can you imagine, so Noah had been preaching for you know, who knows how many years while the, the ark is being built. And he's telling them, I mean, people are laughing at him, like, dude, you're not even near water. What are you doing? You know, building this big boat, you know, <laughs> this thing was the size of an aircraft carrier, uh, you know, uh, on land. And, uh, and he's telling them, God is grieved. His heart is broken over all this wickedness. You need to repent. He is going to bring a flood on the whole earth. And, you know, God's judgment is coming. And unless you're on this boat, you know, you're, you're, you're not going to be safe. And they're like, yeah, right. Ha, ha, ha. Tell me a new one. Okay. And, um, but when God's judgment came, when God told Noah and his family, get in the ark, and the Bible says God shut the door, that was the first time thunder and lightning, can you imagine the people of that time that the sky's going dark, there's thunder, there's lightning, they're like, God is angry. Noah was telling the truth. It's a scary thing. You know, it's thundering really loud and, and uh, lightning is hitting and, you know, it, it, was, it was something. And so, but we don't regard it as such any longer, do we? We really harden our hearts to God's anger that was poured out during Noah and the flood uh, and uh, during that time. And, um, but kids and animals are naturally afraid of the thunder and lightning. And, and it really is a sign. It, it, and think of it. What comes about after a thunderstorm, after rain? Rainbow. That's right. And what's the rainbow? 
A sign of what? Yeah, it's a reminder. And so we have the reminder of the judgment, and then we have the reminder of his covenant. A reminder that God was grieved and angry and destroyed the world with water. And then we have the reminder, but he loves us and he gave us another chance through Noah and his family and we have a covenant with him. Isn't that awesome? But mankind forgets all that. We forget all that. And uh, even with earthquakes, you know, when, when these different signs happen, um, okay, so... When I was growing up, and, and I liked, I liked uh, NASA and rockets and, you know, astronomy and, and, and all this stuff, and uh, not astrology, astronomy, and, um, and I was looking forward to Halley's Comet is coming. And boy, when I was a kid, boy, I couldn't wait to see Halley's Comet, and I, and I read the history of Halley's Comet, and when it came, you know, um, I think it was maybe in the 1800s, was it? And... Uh, whatever it was the last time it was before in our time, um, people were scared. They were hiding. They thought it was a judgment of God. They thought, okay, it's a sign in the heavens from God. Okay, so this is what happened when Haley's... Con I was looking forward to this thing for years. By the time it came around, I was an older teenager, and I was like... <laughs> Didn't bother seeing it, and after it was gone, I was like, Brett, you're an idiot. You will never see this again. You look forward to seeing this thing all your life, and now it's gone. So, oh well. But the point I was making is that even with earthquakes, you know, people in ancient times would be like, God is angry. God is angry. And you know what? I believe that God is still... Now, we're, we're modern. We say, oh, you know, it's the tectonic plates and, you, you, you know, and it's causing all that. It's like, you know, there's been an increase of earthquakes. There's been an increase of volcanic activity over the years. The earth, the earth is reeling and rocking because of the sin. There is a connection between us spiritually and this earth and you know uh when when the lord saved me when i was a, a teenager saved me again and uh and i would i could look at a tree a bush the sky i'm just going wow because i could see god's glory shining through everything it was like somebody took a dark pair of sunglasses off me and i'm i'm just like wow you know um and so creation, even though, um, you know, as that's holy, 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 uh, though the eye of sinful man, his glory may not see, God is still holy, he's still glorious, he's still awesome, and he's still shining through his creation. And I think with our sin, there's, you know, there's a, uh, uh, you know, uh, it, it's just budding you know, sinfulness against God's holiness and glory shining through creation. And so we get earthquakes and volcanoes. Everything's an upheaval. Um, and so um, I'll say this. This is my two cents on this. Um, you know, I really do believe that that earthquake happening that was felt in the UN was not an accident that happened the other way. It, it wasn't just flip a coin and, um, uh, you know, oh, it was just the tectonic plates. Um, I think God was trying to get people's attention. You know, whoever hears of an earthquake happening in New York and, you know, in the being felt in Washington, D.C. area and whatnot, and, and there they were in the U.N., you know. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about Israel. <laughs> Hello, wasn't it not that long ago? Um, uh, let's see, one of the Muslim leaders was blah, blah, blah about Israel right from the podium and <laughs> fell over. Yep, I, I, and I think, I don't know if he died right there where they brought him to the hospital and he was pronounced dead, but I don't think that was an accident. Okay, yeah, in Turkey. And so... You know, God is speaking through his creation. 
And I think what's going on in our modern times is we're stopping our ears and closing our eyes and not wanting to hear what God is saying. And you can say, well, it's, it's natural phenomena. It's just natural. This is all natural. Well, all through the Bible, God uses natural things. He uses natural things. And um, so um, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. <laughs> we, need, we need to know God is Lord. He is in control. And uh, we are going to answer to him. You know, I've, I've taken a, 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 a side trail a lot longer than I, than I expected to. But uh, today I was driving and, um, and I was just thinking about, you know, the, the world that we live in. I know I, I mentioned on Sunday, you know, God has, you know, given us a sandbox. And it's like he put, okay, this is, this is your sandbox. This is your perimeters. But, you know, so God is, God is spirit. He's created, you know, there's a heaven we haven't seen yet, right, where God is. And, and we don't know how long that has been. But um, God is uh, eternal. He's infinite. And, um, and we're going to see it one day because of Jesus. But this world that we live in, God has given us humans. This is our domain. But just think of how awesome God made it, how intricate, how detailed. It's just awesome. And, and God put us he didn't put us in a, in a very small sandbox. He, he put us in a place where we can learn and grow and discover. And I think it's, I think it's to the glory of God that we go to the moon and, and elsewhere. And it's the glory of God that we go deep in the ocean. And, and he, he's given us the things of the earth. You know, he's given us trees to make, you know, furniture and, 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 and the, the elements to, to make electronic things and, and do all, I mean, he's given us an awesome place. But the problem is, we think because this is all we have known, we've been born into it, this is all we got. And so the way people behave, the way they treat each other, the way they live on this earth, they think this is their world and this is all that there is. But God is like, I only put you here temporarily. This isn't it. And people, you know, they do all kinds of horrible, horrible things and, uh, you know, evil, wicked. And this world is just temporary, you know. And so anyway, um, so the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Uh, Amos uh, chapter 7 verse 14 says this. Amos answered Amaziah, I was neither a prophet nor the son of a prophet. But I was a shepherd, and I also took care of sycamore fig trees. <laughs> He's saying, you know what? My dad wasn't a preacher. <laughs> I didn't go to Bible college to be a preacher. I wasn't one of Elijah's, you know, I didn't go through Elisha's school of ministry. Um, God just, I was just a country guy, and God called me to ministry, and here I am. Um, so some other information I want to give about Amos. Now, this is uh, from the uh, NIV study Bible notes, and uh, that's actually an excellent Bible. The study notes are great because they just give facts. It's not, you know, commentaries. You got to be careful. People are giving their opinions. But um, the NIV uh, study Bible notes, and it's the same if you get NASB. I don't know if there's any other versions connected to it, but it's just it's just to give them facts. And so, um, but anyway, so this is some excerpts. Uh, Amos was from Tekoa, a small town about six miles south of Bethlehem and 11 miles from Jerusalem. He was not a man of the court like Isaiah or a priest like Jeremiah. Um, though his home was in Judah, he was sent to announce God's judgment on the northern kingdom, Israel. He probably ministered for the most part at Bethel, um, and that was the northern kingdom's main religious sanctuary where the upper echelons of the northern kingdom worshipped. Um, you know, when I, when I think of Amos, I think of, well, I, let's see, do, do, you guys know, do you guys know who David Wilkerson is? 
Okay, so, you know, he was a country preacher, and God, God calls him to New York City, you know, to, uh, to minister to the gangs. And, uh, but I think of Amos, you know, country guy. But, but when you read the writings of Amos, he wasn't like an unschooled country bumpkin, you know. With, and there's, there's a lot of country people. They got more sense than educated people. But as far as even Amos's book learning and the way he wrote, <clears throat> he was an intelligent guy. But, um, uh, but anyway, so according to the first verse, Amos prophesied. Okay, I said during the years. Let's see, the main part of his ministry was probably carried out 760 to 750 BC. Um, now listen to this. Both kingdoms were enjoying great prosperity and had reached new political and military heights. It was also a time of idolatry, extra extravagant indulgences and luxurious living, immorality, corruption of judicial procedures. Hey, kind of sounds familiar. And oppression of the poor. As a consequence, God would soon bring about the Assyrian captivity of the northern kingdom. Um, Hosea and Jonah are contemporaries of Amos. So, you know, when you study a book and, and you find these things out, you know, it's good to see, okay, what was happening, you know, during the time of Hosea and Jonah. And um, so uh, Israel at the time was politically secure and spiritually smug. About 40 years earlier, at the end of his ministry, Elisha had prophesied the resurgence of Israel's power. And more recently, Jonah, okay, not in the book of Jonah, but in 2 Kings chapter 14, there's a prophecy of Jonah uh, that uh, of the restoration of Israel to the glory not known since the days of Solomon. So the nation felt sure, therefore, that she was in God's good graces. You know, uh, you read in the Bible, even, even in, uh, you know, uh, uh, one of the letters in the book of Revelation, and Jesus says about Jezebel, but I gave her time to repent. You know, and the problem is, we, we, as people, we can misunderstand what God is doing, and he, when he's giving us time to repent, he's giving us great uh, grace to get right, we think instead, oh, God's fine with this. You know, there have been, you know, horribly sad to say that preachers who have become, you know, God had blessed them and they had very well-known ministries and then they get off into sin and God is giving them time to repent, but they think, oh, God's fine with this. I can continue to do it until the time comes when God's like, that's, Jesus is like, that's it. It's done. And then it's all exposed and the rugs yanked out from under them and they come crashing down and we need to be careful we don't misunderstand what God is doing. And um, let's see, I'll, I'll, I'll hold it there because I'm going to talk about that in, in, uh, again in another message. But um, so prosperity increased Israel's religious and moral corruption. Uh, God's past punishments for unfaithfulness were forgotten and his patience was at an end which he sent Amos to announce. <clears throat> there's uh, uh, in Amos chapter 5 verse 24 um, one, one I can't remember I don't think it was the study Bible notes but it was a, one of my commentaries it said this is the theme of the book Amos 5 24 but let justice roll on like a river righteousness like a never failing stream God is holy he is righteous he is just um, you know, how many times we read in the Bible that he hates unjust scales, right? He hates it in court. You know, I like this. In the, in the law, we can read, you know, the Bible says, don't give favoritism to the wealthy. But you know what it also says? Don't give favoritism to the poor. God just wants justice. And, and actually, we see a lot of bad judicial uh, uh, rulings taking place because they're like, well, you know, they're poor. They had this life and this and that. So we're just going to let them go even though they murdered or did something horrible. And God's like, no, justice. 
whether you're poor or rich or in between, I want justice. And you know, we want justice, don't we? Inside, because we're created in the image of God. We want, we want justice. So following then our eight prophecies of judgment, oops, I, I, sorry, verse two. Okay, so verse two says, he said, the Lord roars from Zion and thunders from Jerusalem. Now, now, why would it say from Jerusalem? Yeah, where the temple is. His presence is there, okay? And God, actually, he reveals himself as the warrior king, okay? And now he is sitting, residing in the temple in Jerusalem. And, and yes, so the Lord roars from Zion, thunders from Jerusalem, the pastures of the shepherds dry up, and the top of Carmel, okay, that's not on your Sunday, <laughs> that's called, that's Mount Carmel, <laughs> withers. <laughs> now everybody's like, I'm going to Sonic after this. Okay, so um, following this verse, now are eight prophecies of judgment the last, the last one is Israel. The seventh one is Judah. But you know what? The, the six other ones are the various nations around, um, uh, around that area. Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is not just Lord over Israel, whom he's entered into a covenant with, but he is also Lord of all the countries of the world, whom they all will give an account. And that's why this message is, is very relevant for us today. You know, uh, we get upset over injustices. We get upset over crazy things happening in the world, the way be nations are behaving themselves, what they're doing, wars that are going on. Well, we can be rest assured God sees all this, and he will, in time, bring every nation to, to, to an account. And... Um, and so uh, I believe it will be beneficial for us to go through the book of Amos. That was just the introduction. Now let's pray. <laughs> this is the introductory prayer, not the ending prayer. <laughs> oh, praise you, Lord. God, you, you are so awesome. Lord, your ways are not our ways. Your, your, your thoughts are not our thoughts. And and, and Lord, sometimes that's a good thing. And uh, Lord, you are, you are enthroned on high and you know what you're doing and you will bring every injustice to account. Lord, not only a nation, but a per on a personal level, everyone will be brought to account for the things we have done. And we will stand before you, God, and give an account. And Lord, I pray that you'll give us grace, Lord Jesus, to lift up our heads, to know that our redemption draweth nigh. Lord God, when we see all this mess in the world, Lord, you do not want our hearts to be filled with fear. God, you do not want us to worry. You want us, your, to, us to have your peace. And Lord, to know that you are in control, that Lord, we're always gonna be safe in your hand, and Lord, you're going to bring the nations to account. Lord, no matter the evil that's happening in Iran and Russia and North Korea, Lord, evil that is happening on, on not national levels, but tribal levels, like in uh, uh, Africa, and Lord, things that are happening, Lord, you're going to bring it to an account. And Lord, one day, Jesus, you're going to return as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, who you are and take your rightful place. And Lord, the devil will be bound, uh, Lord, in chains. And Lord, there will be justice and there will be righteousness. There will be equity on the earth. And we thank you for that. But Lord, until that day, Lord, give us hope and strength in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, I'm not going to get through many of these. But um, so eight, the eight prophecies of judgment, uh, the eight recipients are Damascus, Gaza, Tyre, uh, Edom, 
or Edom, however you want to pronounce that, Ammon, Moab, Judah, and Israel. Now, each prophecy begins with God addressing the particular nation, and then the saying, in every one, the saying is, this is what the Lord says, for three sins of, like Damascus, even for four, I will not turn back my wrath, because, and then he says, why? So, um, what does that saying mean for three sins, even for four, okay, for, for three sins of the na you know, that nation, even for four, I'm not going to turn back my wrath because of this. Okay, so um, one, one commentary said, um, for their many sins, especially the one named, Okay, or it could mean, or for the many sins, and the last one that is named was the last straw. Okay, or uh, there's, there's one theologian that contends that it is a poetic way of expressing the number seven, which means their sins have reached its fullness, its completeness, and judgment now is coming. So... Um, and you'll, you'll find that saying in different parts of the Bible for, for, for three and then four, you know, it'll, it'll mention things like that. And I think, you know what, you could probably say yes to all those. That's what it means. And God, then God says, this is why judgment is coming. This was the last straw. This is, you know, didn't, didn't the Lord tell Abraham, he told him he's given him the promised land, but he said, but... You're not going to get it until 400 some years later because the sin of the Canaanites, I think he said, have not reached its full. Okay? So God was still working with them, giving them grace, but God was telling Abraham there was going to come a time where my grace for them has run out and now they're going to get judgment. And, and God used, of course, the Israelites to bring out his judgment upon them in some supernatural things too. Okay, so note, God does not delight in judgment, but when God brings judgment, it's with justice, right? With justice, he judges and makes war, the Bible says. When nations refuse to repent, judgment comes. Um, so in the Bible, I find that um, God does not judge the nations for not keeping the law of Moses. Okay, so the nations are not judged when I say, you know, the Old Testament. I mean the, the covenant. The law was a covenant that God had Israel enter into with him. And so when you read judgment coming on the nations, it's not because they didn't keep the ceremonial laws. It's not because they didn't make particular sacrifices. It's not because... Uh, uh, they, they were eating pigs, you know, <laughs> they're, they're eating ham in, uh, you know, in Assyria, so judgment's coming, you know, or they didn't keep the Sabbath. None of those things, God doesn't bring the nations to task with any of those things, okay? But what I do find God bringing the nations to task about on how they treated their neighbor, how they treated each other, and sexual immoral, uh, immorality. Those two things you will see God bringing the nations to judgment with. But with Israel, yes, those two things, and because God said, we're in a covenant together. Okay, I made, we, I made some promises to you. I'm going to keep my end of the deal. Now this is your end of the deal. And they weren't keeping it. Okay, so... But that's what I see. Uh, you know, just read. When, when you read the Bible, whenever judgment is coming on a Gentile nation, see what he's judging them for. It will never be for anything they're breaking the law of Moses. Okay. So, um, like I said, how they treat their fellow humans. Uh, so, you will see that the judgments in the Gentile nations that are listed, the six Gentile nations in Amos... They all have to do with how they treated their neighbor. Because when God created us, you know, God is love. We were to love God and we were to love, right? That's the, the two greatest laws. Um, 
And so, but when it comes to Judah and Israel, it was this, but it was also, you know, uh, not keeping God's words that he'd given them. So um, maybe we'll just go through one. <laughs> um, I thought we'd get farther than this, but it's okay. It's going on eight o'clock. So, okay, so chapter one, uh, let's read this. This is the first uh, uh, announcement of judgment. Okay, and I highlighted the, the country that it had to deal with. Okay, this is what the Lord says. For three sins of Damascus, even for four, I will not relent because she threshed Gilead. Okay, so I put the Gilead in the color grape, it's called, uh, because that's who they were doing wrong. That was their neighbor that they were wronging. Okay, now what is, um, how, I, I, I've always pronounced it Gilead, however you want to pronounce that. Um, who, who is that? What's that? Oh, you guys are going to, you guys are going to blush when I tell you. <laughs> You're going to be embarrassed. It's, it's uh, Israel. It's the, it, it was those who st uh, stayed on the eastern. They didn't cross the Jordan. Okay, they wanted their inheritance right on the east east part and um and so uh it's israel's territory east of the jordan okay and so it says because damascus okay and that's still around today damascus syria um threshed gilead with sledges having iron teeth I will send fire on the house of Haziel. Okay, that was the um, that will consume the fortress of Ben Hadad. Those were uh, leaders in um, in Damascus. I will break down the gate of Damascus. I will destroy the king who is in the valley of Avon and the one who holds the scepter in Beth Eden. The people of Aram will go into exile to Kerr, says the Lord. Okay, so let me unpack this for you. So, first of all, uh, their crime was uh, that they threshed Gilead with sledges having iron teeth. Okay, so the way heads of grain were separated, they were they were crushed, and it it and it was either literally that they had these iron sledges that they drug over the people, okay, or it was figuratively that they were especially cruel and inhumane in their treatment towards them. And um, it was, you know, to expand their territory. And the judgment was that they would be conquered. Okay, so Damascus would be conquered for their horrible, inhumane treatment of the people of Gilead. And uh, you can read about it in 2 uh, Kings uh, 6 and verse 9. Um, now, the valley of Avon, okay, let's go back. Okay, um, I will destroy the king who's in the valley of Avon. Uh, the valley of Avon means valley of wickedness. And Beth Eden means, okay, and, and the one who holds the scepter in Beth Eden, that means the house of pleasure. So these were most likely derogatory remarks, you know, that God is saying, you're wicked and you live for pleasure and I'm going to destroy you, okay? And um, now the people of Ara were, um, let's see, it says, the people of Aram will go into exile to Kerr. Now this is really interesting because you know what? That's where they originally came from. <laughs> and, and I like this. This is, um, let's see, which commentary was this from, this particular port? Let's see, when I have it, anyway, when I have my computer in this tablet mode, I can't see my, my uh, footnotes that I put in. But, um, but it says, uh, said that uh, God had brought them out of Kerr and he would bring them back after obliterating everything they had achieved. Isn't that good? I'm, waiting, I'm wiping out all your accomplishments, everything you over the years, your father, your grandfather, and you, you know, have achieved. 
you're all getting wiped out, and you're going back to where you came from. <laughs> you're out of here. <laughs> Isn't that good? And so that was God's judgment on them. And that happened in 732 B.C. under uh, the king of Assyria, Tiglath uh, Pileser uh, the third. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's good. All right, so do you want to go one more? Or do we need to end it? It's 8 o'clock. said don't matter okay um you know what why don't we stop here because the next one is gaza and i'll probably end up talking a little bit more about that one and then you're going to be wishing that you hadn't given me the go ahead to do another one so but we'll pick up next week and god sees what's happening and let's see was it the book of let's see is it the book of joel where the prophet is complaining to God. First, he complains to God about his, fel his country, the state of his country. So God's like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm bringing the Babylonians, and this is what's going to happen. Then the prophet's like, wait a minute. Whoa, time out, Lord. They're more evil than us, and you're going to bring them against us? And then the Lord says, okay, but this is what's going to happen to them after I'm done with them. And so... Um, you know, God is in control. He does all things good. He does all things right. And um, it'd be good for us to close in prayer. And I, and, I, and I, you know, I'm not laughing at this. It's to pray for our country. Our country, everything's about living for pleasure, rebelling against God, you know, uh, I don't, I don't want to be a man. I want to be a woman. You know, I mean, it's just rebellion all the way across the board and all this evil and wickedness and confusion. And, and, and anyway, I could all go all the way down the line. I mean, we all watch the news. We're all living in the same day and age. It's horrible, the things that have happened. You know, there was, um, let's see, who was it? Oh, it was actually uh, Judy was mentioning. She's like, oh, I was, you know, born in the, what, the 40s and, and grew up through all this, and, and it's like our country used to be so much, so different. It was so different. You know, leave it to beaver was a, was a you know, households were like that. You know, there's, uh, this is interesting. Um, so at lunchtime, uh, I, I, I'll put on like YouTube and watch some short videos, you know. And so it was actually Ben Shapiro, whatever you think of him, whatever. I don't usually watch him much, but... Um, but he was, I guess they're, they, they're calling, there's a, um, there's a trend now calling tr a trad wife. Okay, have you heard of that, a trad wife? Okay, so on, on TikTok and other things, there's people getting on there saying, okay, so a trad wife is ladies getting back to traditional wives. And it's a good thing. And they're saying, you know, my husband is going to be the breadwinner. I'm going to stay home. I'm going to take care of the home. I'm going to raise my children. I'm going to look nice for when my husband comes home. And, you know, we're, we have a wonderful family relationship. Well, then you got these ladies, these other women who are like getting on and making these short videos and uh, uh, downing trad wives and, and how this, this one lady is saying, oh, I, I did my research and, you know, back in the 50s, there was, there was so many ladies because they were imprisoned in their homes and they, they were on all this psychotic medicine and they were having all these episodes and, and all this stuff. And, and Ben Shapiro's like, you know, she's crazy. She doesn't have her, you know, uh, her facts straight because it's today, our day and age, where ladies are, you know, the, the statistics are horrible how many ladies are on, you know, uh, psychotic, you know, that's the wrong word, but medicine, you know, for their, for their mental health. And, and my mom raised 10 kids and she was a trad wife. <laughs> and she was happy, you know? She was my dad's secretary too. And you know why she was my dad's secretary? And hats off to my dad, he, when he started his business after he broke his leg on a motorcycle and he was off a year and he decided I'm gonna start my own business 
and he started his own business and it was originally the shop was going to be, you know, in another location and he had a secretary and I don't know what happened, but my dad said, we're not doing this. <laughs> my shop's going to be at home and honey, you're going to be my secretary. And I appreciate my dad. He always protected his marriage. This one time he was, uh, well, he ended up entering into a uh, partnership with his cabinet factory and they went, out, they went to this, um, Oh, what was this? Uh, what would they call it? A convention where there's, um, you know, all these different, what's that? Trade yeah, trade show and all this newest equipment, all this stuff. Well, the other guys, the other partners and, and whoever went with, um, you know, they, uh, they weren't good family men and they went out and had fun. You know what my dad did? He, he talked the whole time to my mom over the phone for hours. <laughs> and, you know, hats off to my dad. You know, he protected his marriage. And, uh, and so, uh, praise the Lord, my dad was faithful. And so, um, now why did I get off on this? But the, <laughs> the, the, the trad, I've never heard of the trad wife, you know? And so it's a, oh, because... The way our society has gone, it is so rebellious and so evil. And they, you know, Jesus said to, to Jerusalem, you know, if only you knew what would bring you peace, but now it's taken away from you. You know, God's ways are the best ways. You want good relationships, you want mental health, go God's ways. You know, you, you, want, you want chaos and you think you're in freedom because, oh, I'm an empowered woman and all this nonsense and you're going to be miserable because that's what the devil has for you. That's the lies of the enemy. Amen. And so uh, um, God's design is a man loving a woman and protecting and providing and a woman loving her husband and, and, and both serving each other out of love. Amen. And that is the best. Praise the Lord. Well, let's all stand. We're going to close in prayer. <clears throat> you know, Jesus said for us not to be ashamed of his words. Amen. And we shouldn't be ashamed to, to, to talk, stand up in this generation and say, you know, if you, if you want a healthy marriage, be a trad wife, <laughs> be, be a loving, faithful husband. Amen. Oh, Lord God, um, we just thank you for our time together this evening. And uh, Lord, thank you that all your ways are good and just, all your ways are best. Lord, you've given us your book because you want us to have a good life. God, you want us to have good relationships in the home, good relationships, Lord, in town, good relationships in our country, and Lord, country to country. Lord, you want us to have good, healthy relationships, and it will take place, God, as we allow you, Jesus, to be the king of our heart, the king of our home, the king of our society, our nation. And Lord God, we read, oh Lord, a little bit this evening and, and talked about how, Lord, how, how, how you give people and you give nations time to repent, Lord, because you love them. You're wanting them to turn. You're wanting them to repent. But, Lord, a time comes when, Lord, judgment comes. And, Lord, just like we read about Damascus, Lord, it was full. It was full. The original people, they, they went back to where they came from. Lord, you sent them back. Lord, you stripped them of all their accomplishments. Lord, you know how to humble people, for you are God. And Lord, we pray, Lord, our society, our world is in such a mess. Lord, I remember back when I was a child hearing people say, the world's going into hell in a handbasket. Well, Lord, now it's really going to hell in a, in a, in a huge barge load. And uh, Lord, we pray for our country, God. We love the United States, God. We're proud to be Americans, Lord. We're blessed to grow up in America. God, thank you for the United States. But Lord, there is so much evil. There's so much wickedness. And Lord, we pray, oh Lord, God, sometimes I don't really even know how to pray. God, there's a spiritual battle going on, Lord, and you came to destroy the works of the evil one. Lord, destroy the works of the evil one in our country, God. Raise up a standard, oh Holy Spirit, against this wickedness, we pray. For Lord, your word says when the enemy comes in like a flood, you would do that. Lord, do that, we pray. 
God, we, you tell us to pray for our leaders, Lord, and God, that they would be saved, that we could live peaceful lives. Lord, we pray for their salvation. God, we pray, Lord, that you would have mercy. God, there is much evil in our country, much evil, but we pray, God, that, Lord, that in wrath you'd remember mercy. Lord, have mercy on America. Let there be another revival as you graciously have brought from time to time, Lord, in the, in the past of our nation. Lord, let there be revival, we pray. Oh, God, then, then lives will be changed. Homes will be whole. Lord, society will be what it should be. Oh, God, we pray. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us, your people, Lord. Jesus, give us boldness. Help give us grace to speak the truth in love. And Lord, to stand for your, for your uh, truth, Lord, of your word. And, uh, and God, in all holiness, God, I pray for that. Lord, I, we love you. We give you praise. Lord, uh, help Israel, God. Um, they are not perfect, but they are your chosen people. Lord, you are still in covenant with them. Lord, help them in this war that they are in. Lord, and, and, and Lord, just give us grace in your precious name. Thank you, Lord. Bless your people, Lord. Thank you for our time together. Bless the rest of our week and bring us back safely on Sunday in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you for joining us.